Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. This video is all about starting a mid-July, mid-summer container garden. We're going to grow determined variety tomatoes, squash, and cucumbers. It is not too late to have a garden. I'm going to show you how to do it in containers. And we're using these metal tubs that are 17 gallons. We need to punch holes in them. I've talked about that before. And we're using these uh, Jack Daniel barrels, half barrels, and they're about probably 35 gallons. And you can see that a 17 gallon container actually drops in there nicely if you don't want to fill the whole container. Let's just talk about what we're going to fill this with first. I have plenty of videos. I will link one on how to make your own container mix. But to keep it simple, you can get any potting mix that is on sale. That's mostly peat moss anyway. That's what I recommend. You want your container mix to have a lot of peat moss or, co or uh, cocoa core or coir, as I've been corrected. Combination of both. Whatever you want to use, they hold water. They don't add a lot of nutritional value, but your container mixes must hold water. I'm going to make mine using this inexpensive brand that was on sale. So this is what we'll have at the end of the video. I'm going to show you how to grow tomatoes, cucumbers, squash, zucchini, your large plants in containers. If you follow these principles, you can have a successful container garden. And I'm going to use peat moss. So it'll be probably when I'm done about a two to one ratio. So it'd be like two bags of the potting mix and then about one bag worth in theory of the, of the uh, peat moss. That will be plenty of moisture. We're going to fill it with organic fertilizer, and <laughs> not the whole container. I'll show you how I put in a couple different handfuls at different levels, and that will put in the granular organic, which is the plant tone right there. Any of them work, they're basically the same um, ingredients in there. That will set up the container mix with the granular, and then we're gonna water everything in with fish emulsion, and then every 10, 20, 30 days, depending on plant size, you would water it in with your water-soluble organic fertilizer. The whole key to being successful is making sure you have the right size container, the right kind of container mix, water evenly, regularly, and keep the plants fed. This will be a very successful um, container garden. I will do videos over the rest of the season to show you how to take care of it and what we harvest from it. So let's get started with taking the materials right over to my deck there. That's where the whiskey barrels are good to go. And we'll get to planting. I'm gonna show you all the steps of setting up a midsummer container garden so that you will have vegetables come August and into September. So here's the basic setup. I'm going to be growing in these four containers. Again, metric conversion is actually in the video description. So this is 17 gallons. I really recommend 10 to 20 gallons for what we're doing today, minimum. These are probably 35 to 40 gallons. The bigger the better when you're growing tomatoes, cucumber, zucchini, squash, because they really uh, develop large root systems and they're big plants. You want to be planting into a container, not for how small the plant is now, you know, they look kind of cute, we could stuff a lot in there, but how big they're going to be. We'll talk about the plants shortly. In the bottom, if you want, I've talked about this before, that is five gallons worth of shredded hardwood. That's a five gallon bucket. And then that's a half a bucket, 2.5 gallons of shredded hardwood in the bottom of there. And that's so that that's another material that's going to really hold water. And you can see about one inch up, I put a hole for drainage and the mulch comes just below that hole. So this is all a strategy to have your containers hold water so that your plants do the best. If your containers just dry out once, it's going to damage the plant system. That's when you often see blossom end rot on tomatoes and containers. It's not because it's a lack of calcium, it's because of uneven watering. So again, this is five gallons in there and putting wood chips or wood shredded hardwood in the bottom isn't going to take nitrogen from your plant. People do worry about that. It's if you mix this wood all through the potting mix and all through your soil, then you would have issues with, with nitrogen. Putting it down at the bottom won't cause a problem and putting it up top, we're gonna to do that too to mulch, won't cause a problem. But you could throw in a couple tablespoons, that's two or three tablespoons full of any organic granular fertilizer. They're all basically the same. In a container this size, it's a little bit smaller. You know, one handful, and I'll do the same down there. Mix it through thoroughly. And these are usually a combination of blood meal, bone meal, chicken manures. Um, sometimes they throw in alfalfa, 
different kinds of things. So that's plenty of granular fertilizer to provide nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium down there at the bottom when the roots get there. It also help the wood break down, which will also give back to the plants. Maybe not this year, but next year. So that's the setup for these containers. And then if you want, you could just put potting mix in. If that's all you want to do, that's perfectly fine. Or you can do what I'm doing. It's a two to one ratio. So that again means to be two buckets of potting mix to one bucket of peat moss, or you could use cocoa core. And I'm going to set that up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fill it halfway. I'm not going to show that on camera to save some time. Fill it halfway, throw in another handful or two into this bigger container of the granular fertilizer, mix it through, and then I put in the rest, another two handfuls, mix it in. That's how you set it up with the granular fertilizer. Okay, let me do that because it's starting to rain and I want to get this video done and everything set up. So you can pick and choose what's going to work for you. All, all of our budgets are different. We're all in different parts of the country, of the world, so getting the materials varies. So that's why I don't like giving out prices. So in the half whiskey barrels, you're going to need three bags. If you're just going to go without the peat moss, you probably need four or five bags. Those are 32 quart bags. Again, the conversion table is in the video description. You're going to need about one and a half to two for these 17 gallon containers. You're also going to need a uh, three foot cubic bale of peat moss. This is very dry, but it's going to mix with some of the potting mix. It has some moisture. We're going to water it all in. And again, it's two parts potting mix one part peat moss if you want to do that otherwise you can just fill it all with a potting mix all right so everything is filled and the good news is that i used three less bags and i forgot that's because i did put some of the shredded hardwood down at the bottom if you do that you're not going to need as much of, of the potting mix but generally speaking that's what you're going to need the mix comes out really fluffy it's perfect. This is what you want. You want to be growing your plants in something like this in containers. I will link the videos to show you how I make it on my own. And in this case, of course, we are using the potting mix and we're supplementing peat moss in there. And I, I know I'm repeating myself, but you don't have to follow me 100% exactly. There's a thousand ways to garden. So you could just go with the potting mix and be perfectly, uh, and your plants will be perfectly fine and you can be done with it. So this is basically what I was doing. I would drop in the potting mix two handfuls, two or three tablespoons here and there of, of the organic granular and the peat moss and I would just mix it through and just mix it through, press it down. You want it to be pretty firm. You want a nice firm planting base so your plants don't topple over at the roots. Smooth it out. It's a little more in here than I would like. You want to leave about an inch or two here so that we can put down some of the shredded hardwood or any mulch that you're using. And this sets up the containers, the keys, large containers, really great container mix. Now let's get to the plants. So I'm in Maryland zone seven. Let's just call it the middle of July. And you can start your cucumbers, squash and zucchini from seed right now. They will germinate really within probably five days and they mature in anywhere from 40 to 50 days. So you have plenty of time here. But I'm using plants that I got on sale, um, I think at Home Depot or someplace like that. They were a little bit beat up, but I fed them fish emulsion. And what you look for is you want to just see green leaves coming back. So these plants will be perfectly fine. They also have two plants per pot. We need to thin them down to one plant, maybe two, if you're doing uh, the bush cucumbers right over there. So let me go over what you can grow. In something that's 35 to 40 gallons, one full-size squash or zucchini plant, maybe tuck in a determinate tomato, that's what I'm going to do. If you're just getting started, I would just go with a single um, tomato plant of the indeterminate variety. The indeterminate variety will grow and grow and grow. You'll need to stake it up. If you want to subscribe to my channel, I'll show you how I take care of these and how I build the um, trellising and the staking for these different containers. So. In something this size, one indeterminate tomato will do really, really well. That's plenty of soil. You could even put in two determinate varieties. The determinate tomatoes, this is a determinate tomato. It's going to get to a set height. It's going to flower and set fruit over a short period of time and then it dies off. So it only gets to a set size and produces versus the indeterminate. That's why you can grow more determinates because they're smaller. I'm also putting in bush cucumbers. 
So in a container this size, I'm gonna put in two bush cucumbers. In a container this size, I could still go with two bush cucumbers, one determinate tomato, one indeterminate tomato. And you might say, well, why do I need this size if you're saying I can grow the same thing in this size? The difference is really up to you. If you're in a really hot area or you can't water regularly, in the hot summer you may have to water every day, you're gonna to wanna to grow in something larger because it's more forgiving. If you're able to water and you're able to come out, then you can also grow those same plants in a container in that size. I hope it makes sense to you. So it really depends on what you're able to do. So what we're gonna do here, we're gonna put in a single zucchini plant, a determinate tomato, bush cucumber, determinate tomato, squash plant, determinate tomato. And that's what I'm gonna set up here and I'll show you how to take care of those. All right, so this is going to be a Black Beauty Zucchini. There are two plants there. I'm gonna plant both. Whatever one looks the best in two weeks, I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna remove the other one. You only one, want one zucchini plant in here. Next to it, it's gonna be a determinate variety tomato. I think that's a heat master. I was just going to put a single determinate tomato in there, but I bought extra. I'm gonna thin that down to one cucumber plant. It's a bush variety cucumber plant. Whenever I, and again, in about a week, and whatever one I see is the strongest, I'll keep, I'll remove the other three. This one is a bush variety cucumber, and I'm gonna keep all three in here, and that's gonna be plenty of cucumber plants for pollination, and these will get trellised upwards. Even though they're bush variety, I'm still gonna grow upward, and maybe because I have the room, I'll let one or two kind of grow along the ground here. Coming over here, we're gonna do the straight neck squash. Same thing, there are two plants in there. Whatever one looks the best in a week, I'll keep and I'll remove the other one. And that's a determinate tomato right there. And there's actually two in there. We're only going to keep one and I'll take one of those today. So planting is gonna be pretty straightforward. They're all gonna be planted to the same level that they're in, in the containers. And let's see, you know what? I'm gonna try and do it one hand. Because this container mix is so loose, you can just dig it out. It's beautiful soil. With tomatoes, let's see, we're gonna have to roll it, squeeze it, loosen it up, there you go, and then it'll pop right out. We're gonna do this very gingerly, there we go. Nice root system. You know, and if I can plant this one-handed, you can certainly do it with both hands. Tomatoes you can plant a little bit deeper and then just backfill. Because they are a vine, roots will actually grow out of here. I will show you how to manage this plant because it's a determinate variety. We're not gonna do a lot of pruning, like that's a sucker right in there. For your determinate tomatoes, you really don't prune a lot. You want all the suckers to grow because they turn into production stems and they produce tomatoes. So once that's in, we just press it down. And I'm gonna pop out the rest of the plants and put them in there just to get them set up. All right, so they're all in and they're pretty much planted to the same level they were in the containers. Now, it's the middle of July. Maryland Zone 7, you can start your cucumbers, zucchini, and squash from seed. You have plenty of time. But for your determinate tomatoes, or even your indeterminate, any tomatoes, I would plant them right now from transplants. The determinate varieties mature from being planted, transplant size, in anywhere from 40 to 60 days. Plenty of time here. Your indeterminate tomatoes would do fine too. But if you're starting from seed, it might be a little tight with the weather coming in. But you have plenty of time to start a container garden and grow squash, zucchini, cucumbers, tomatoes. We could even do beans, different kinds of plants. So if you have already having a great season and you wanna add more, certainly you can add more. If you were slow in getting started, you got plenty of time. And if you had trouble with insects or diseases, you can start over in containers. All right, so let's get to feeding them with the water-soluble fertilizer, and I'll talk about how to do that. I'm not gonna mulch the tops today. The plants are still small. I'll add mulch in future videos. So the question I always get is, how often do I water? And I can't answer that. It's gonna vary greatly on the plant size, the container size, your temperatures. Right now, these plants are, you know, not 
large by any means, but with the heat of 90, 95 degrees here in Maryland, I'm going to have to water these at least two times a week, maybe three times a week. When they get bigger, they begin to fill out the containers. You may have to water every day depending on your temperatures. The best way to check is to check the top inch or two of soil. It always dries from the top down, so if you have two inches of dry soil, you want to water your plants in. For the feedings, again, you know, when they're small, when they're seeds, you know, every three or four weeks, you don't need a lot of water-soluble fertilizer. When they're about this size, you know, to keep it simple, every two weeks, this is fish emulsion. Just follow the instructions, and I just want to show you how much I give them when watering them in. Containers aren't like the earth. They don't have the same microbiology, don't have the same macro and micronutrients, so you really have to keep them fed on a schedule. So I'll just water in the rest of my plants like this. This is how you set up large plants to grow in containers. Please subscribe. I'll show you how I take care of these plants. Bug control, disease management, trellising, and harvesting. Thanks for watching, and please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com.